What's wrong, God-centered entrepreneur? Are you not motivated? Do you not have any passion? Do you feel isolated? Are you stressed out about the uncertainty of all of this? These are all things that lead directly to burnout. So where are you right now? Are you actually on the verge of giving up the things that are truly important to you to make this entrepreneurial thing work? Do you know that you're neglecting things, things like your family, your health, just to keep going? Be careful because burnout is on the horizon. What can you do? We're going to examine three things to see how you are doing and then I'm actually gonna give you some strategies so that you can reframe your own approach so you can avoid burnout. So what are the three areas we're gonna look at in this video? We're gonna look at one, your passion, what God has put on your heart to do. Two, your mindset, what God wants your focus to really be on. And three, your direction, what God planned for you at this time because when you have the right combination of these three things you will be less likely to burn out and more likely to grow your tenacity as an entrepreneur join me Hey there, wise woman. This is Deneen TB, your Christian business growth strategist and the clarity coach who really wants to see you get out of your indecision and start making choices based on God's calling for you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so that you can keep the content coming. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about burnout. I really wanted to chat about this topic because way too often I see it in entrepreneurs and what it does is it leads to them really giving up on their dreams. My own clients need to be reminded of this often so that they can avoid burnout as well. And I wanted to share with you some of the same strategies that I give them to help avoid burnout. So we're gonna break it down into the three categories I've already said. We're gonna talk about your passion, we're gonna talk about your mindset, and we're gonna talk about your direction. We're gonna look at each one of these, the good side of it and the ugly side of it, to give you an idea of where you stand right now and then give you some strategies to take you away from the burnout and more into that growth muscle of tenacity, which we all need as entrepreneurs, right? Okay, so the first one is passion. Now, having a passion for your business, that's easy, right? It is what you feel that God has called you to do. It's the work that you find important to you. But there are two types of passion. There's obsessive passion and harmonious passion. Which do you think you have about your business? Obsessive or harmonious? At least, how are you approaching your business? In what way? Obsessive really means that your business is important to you because of the status it brings you, the money that you get, and the other kind of rewards and accolades that come along with it. Harmonious passion means your business is important to you because of the satisfaction that you receive from actually doing your business and how it really shows who you are as a person. I want you to be honest with yourself. Which one do you think you are or where are you leaning right now? Having this obsessive passion, as you can imagine, that's what leads to burnout. Why? Because you put yourself in this constant state of anxiety and stress to keep performing. And that kind of work becomes emotionally draining. And you feel that it's taking you a lot of effort all the time just to complete those daily tasks. On the other hand, having that harmonious passion, those people that do that have that leaning experience less burnout. Why? Because while you may be totally absorbed in your work, which you can be, you're really creating experiences that allow you to reflect on the qualities of yourself, the things you like about yourself. You're actually doing you when you are having that harmonious passion. So do you find yourself in that first category sometimes, that obsession, passion, or obsessive passion? Maybe just even a little? 
So here are some things that you can do to be more harmonious and less obsessive. First, take breaks from your work. Not just daily, but plan your Sabbath time. Go on a weekend away. Take a vacation. You know, you became an entrepreneur for the autonomy of being your own boss, of being able to do things your own way, right? So let me give you some strategies here. Daily, when you give yourself that 50 minute hour, that means stopping every 50 minutes during your day to get up, move your body, get water, breathe deeply, all during your work day, it actually gives you more concentration and it gives you better attention to your tasks. I've talked about Sabbath before. I've talked about the way that God modeled Sabbath for us to really show that we are designed to need a down day every single week. So I'm going to dare you. I dare you to trust God enough with your business to shut down for a 24-hour period every single week. I dare you. And of course, planning time away with your family is super important to the work-life balance, which I really call prioritization. When you can prioritize time with those who are truly important to you without feeling guilty that you've been working too hard, that's a win for balance because you've prioritized it. What it really comes down to is, again, this reframe I always want to say it, reframe of priorities. Your passion for your work needs to be Christ-centered, not world-centered. You know, God's promised you that satisfaction when you are following his calling. Will it be easy? No. Entrepreneurship is not an easy road. But it will continue to give you that sense of purpose, knowing that you're doing what you're called to do. That is what grows tenacity in you and then keeps you from burnout okay the second thing we're going to talk about is mindset now there are so many coaches out there that talk about mindset what is mindset exactly well it is a way or the way that you approach a situation or the course of action that you take based on a set of beliefs so we're going to look at two types of mindset Now, you may have heard of them before with different words, but we're going to be looking at fixed and flexible. Do you know what type of mindset you already have? Have you done some of this work before? A fixed mindset is really a rigid way to look at the world. There is one way to do things, and it must be done that way. Um, Imagine how hard that is when you're actually an entrepreneur to have this kind of mindset. The one thing that is really necessary for entrepreneurs is to actually be able to think through different solutions to the problems that their clients are having. That kind of goes with the territory. So you can see how that leads to burnout very quickly. (laughs) What happens when you have this fixed mindset, you get stuck thinking that you are your work. You believe that your abilities are actually these fixed traits that you find your one way to do things, find your one way to do something, and you won't even change it even if you're seeing no results. And of course, that's the definition of insanity, and it will definitely lead to burnout. The flexible, or sometimes what's called a growth mindset, is a place where you know that there's always room for improvement. You know that you have to work hard and that your talents and your abilities will actually develop more over time. That's where tenacity comes in. Working that muscle means that you actually get better at what you're doing. You know you can get better at it and you avoid the burnout zone by knowing that. How's your mindset then? That's what we're looking at. Do you lean towards more of a fixed mindset or do you feel that you are more flexible? Now, here are some ways that you can shift your mindset from being that less fixed and to be more flexible. When you see your work as really a process and not a project, by reframing those words that you have in your head, you will see growth. Your work, your calling, it's just like the process of sanctification. It's growing little by little. 
So how can we do this? Start by taking time to celebrate successes. Every single day, write out one thing that you are grateful for in your life or in your business, and then write out why you are grateful for it. At the end of every week, take some time to review how you've moved forward, what things got accomplished, what got a little bit more movement forward for you. Write that out so that you can go back and review it and see it and know that you are making progress, that the process is working. And then, of course, reward yourself along the way. You have that Friday, yay, celebration. I got this done, or I did this, or I moved forward in this way. And then, of course, there's that little thing that we have in our brains every day. So we need to have a phrase ready whenever your mind starts to make you think negatively, right? You might say things like, I messed this up, or I can't do anything right. Something like that, right? Use the power of what I call yet, but. Yet, but, okay? So say something like this. I can't do this right yet, but I am improving every day as I continue to follow my plan. Or something like that, okay? I love that one. I use that one a lot for myself. When you can stay focused on the adventure that God has given you through entrepreneurship, you realize that he's actually using it to make you more like his son. He will give you exactly what you need when you need to be equipped to do what he's calling you to do. Trust that process that you are growing and he's going to make sure that you have what you need. Be open to what God is doing and allow it to transform you. Be excited to watch God work in your life and in your business because burnout will never be an issue with this flexible growth mindset. And of course, writing it all down and being able to review it, you can remind yourself of how far you've come. Okay, third, we're going to talk about your direction. Now, I'm sure that you have heard of serial entrepreneurs. They do one thing at a time, they make it successful, and then they move on. When you see your direction as this all or nothing and not this do this now and then that later, you're actually doing too much. (laughs) Instead of thinking all right now, I want you to think of what will fit right now. So those are our two contrasts, right? all right now or what will fit right now so let me ask you this how many ideas are you trying to include in your one business right now now I know you want to help as many people as you can because you can you have multiple talents you have multiple interests you have multiple giftings and you want to use them all in some way to meet the needs of everyone this is reckless and that is the slippery slope to burnout. It's directly there. You know, God will use you in different ways at different times in your life. You do not need to put all those talents, all those skills, all those strengths into one place. Calling Clarity is all about choosing those pieces of your life so you can create your unique mosaic masterpiece for your business right now. It is really about fitting your business to your lifestyle, to creating something that allows you to have the impact that you want to have in the way that God designed you. Now believe me, there will be times you will modify what you're doing now and you'll grow into even bigger things than you can imagine. It is not about the big vision with God. It is really about being faithful in all of those little things, all of those little steps that he then grows into something that you haven't even imagined possible yet. So are you trying to do it all right now? Are you actually doing too much? Let's see. Maybe this will give you some clues. Are you feeling tired when you face a new day? Are you doubting the significance of what you're actually doing? Those are all signals that you may be on that road to burnout. So what if you could, again, reframe your direction with a more streamlined approach? 
what will fit now over the years is how I've actually approached everything that I do in my own business from beginning with teaching Spanish classes to having a networking group to doing retreats, running workshops, and now coaching. I've added and I've taken away pieces that are unique to my talents and abilities to create the business, the business that really works for where I'm at at this particular time in my life. You can also reframe the way that you think about your business by looking at three factors. What problem do you solve? Who do you want to solve it for? And how do you solve it in your unique way? How do you do this? You start with your own story. What have you experienced and solved for yourself? Write out the problem and the steps you took to overcome it, to solve that problem that you had. Those you can help are many times just a mirror of you. Then find out more about these people, the people that you want to serve, by talking to them about their wants. Until you know what they want, you will never be able to align your solution and attract them to you for your business. So create two lists labeled what I'm good at doing, what I love to do. Write out as many things as you can think of under each one of these lists. Don't filter yourself. Don't think about that. What am I good at? What do I love? Look and see on these two lists where things start to overlap. Only by doing the things that overlap in your business will it make it you stand out. You know, getting really clear on these things will keep you from overwhelm, and it will really maneuver you away from the burnout. Tenacity shines through as you take each step that God has called you to take and really trust that you will make the impact that he wants you to make. What I have found is that burnout is really a tactic or a distraction from the enemy. He's the one that makes things confusing and overwhelming and stressful. He wants you to give up. He wants you to give up on what God has called you to do by really twisting this passion, your mindset, and your direction. Don't allow it to happen. Grow in God. Allow God to teach you. I love what 1 Peter 1, 5-7 says. It says, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. You know, God's got you. He wants you serving those that he planned for you to serve. You are part of his story. So where are you? How are you living out your passion? How is your mindset improving things in your business? How is your direction impacting those you feel called to serve? Now, if you're listening to this and you're just on the verge of burnout, or you know you may be heading there, I would actually just love to have a chat with you about your passion, about your mindset, about your direction, and see if I can help you create the business that God designed for you, for your life right now. Just go ahead and click the link in the description, set up your appointment today to talk with me. You can avoid burnout by growing in tenacity. God wants you to be strong in him. As I always say, we need to grow your faith so that it fuels your business. Thanks so much for being here. Make sure to like the video. Tell me one of your ahas down in the comments today. I would love to know what's going on in your brain. And please do subscribe. This is Deneen TV. Have a great rest of your day. And as always, be filled to overflowing.